Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Blunderbuss Shotgun. This is one of three new weapons that was added to Advanced Warfare today in a recent patch. I'm going to try to review all three of them today, but this is definitely the most unusual and most unique weapon. I'm using the Dragonfire variant right now, which has a dragon on the front of the, ver on the, front of the barrel with horns. That's why it looks weird when I aim down sights. It's an elite variant. It's kind of unusual and decorative, but this weapon can only be unlocked via supply drops. You can get it via regular supply drops or advanced supply drop but it doesn't come normal you have to get one of the variants and when you get one of the variants you also unlock the base but this is a very very unusual and unique weapon I'm going to spend a lot of time on it today so that you understand how it works and how it can be good because it can also be quite frustrating to use the first thing we're going to talk about is how much damage it deals and we're going to be looking at it in damage per pellet because shotguns shoot multiple pellets and we're going to count those up it'll deal 50 damage per pellet up close 30 at medium ranges and 10 at long ranges. To put this in perspective, that is the exact same damage as the TAC-19 shotgun, which is quite high to tell you the truth. However, the, the important thing with shotguns is to check the pellet count. Now, up until now, all shotguns in Advanced War Warfare have had the exact same pellet count. The Blunderbuss shotgun has 18 pellets in the base variant. The variant that I'm using right now has 20. Some of the others have a little bit more or less, but that is insanely high, and I really want to point out just how high that is. All of the other shotguns in Advanced Warfare only have 8 pellets. In previous Call of Duty games, all shotguns were going to be about 8 to 10 pellets, maybe a little bit more if you ran a goofy attachment. The Executioner in Black Ops 2 was only 6 pellets, some are less than that, but this is more than double the next highest shotgun, which truly is insanely high and that's going to very greatly impact the amount of damage it deals. The amount of damage that this shotgun will deal per shot per trigger pull is 900 up close which means you can kill nine people, 540 at medium ranges which is enough for five people, and 180 at maximum range which is almost enough for two people. This is the highest damage in the game and I mean this is the highest damage in the entire game. This is more than several sniper rifle headshots, this is more than the Goliath, this is more than the super annoying Walker tank, or the Vulcan, this is an unholy, unfathomable, godlike damage pump per shot. However, the weapon, if you haven't noticed, has some severe downsides, most notably the fact that you have to wait five seconds in between reloads, which we will be talking about right now. The rate of fire is 11 RPM which is the slowest rate of fire I have ever seen in any Call of Duty game ever, which kind of counteracts that we have absurdly high damage and we have absurdly low rate of fire. You fire, you are able to fire one time per 5.5 seconds and you have to reload every single time and you can't reload cancel it, you can't cancel the animation. If you climb, if you sprint, if you YY, it stops and you have to do it again. This can be a major pain in the butt and it's really, really slow. I mean, a lot of people, and my Myself included when I first used this I, I picked up this weapon and I fired it once and then went to reloading and I was like oh god this has got to be the worst weapon in the entire game that's not true at all it has some really nice redeeming attributes but this is definitely its weakness its rate of fire is miserably slow it's really frustrating for comparison so that you have a better idea in your head the TAC-19 which is not a fast firing weapon fires at 89 rpm so this one is about eight times slower and the Moors fires at 47 RPM, again, not very fast, so this one is about four times slower than the Moors, so it fires very, very slow. I just want to kind of hammer that home. However, it does have good range. The maximum damage range is 7.6 meters. That's the range at which it's dealing that 50 damage per pellet all the way out there, and the maximum range is 16.5 meters. This is statistically identical to the TAC-19, so if you're familiar with the TAC-19 ranges, you will again be very familiar with the Blunderbuss ranges. Maybe a little bit different because we have higher pellet counts and the maximum one shot kill range for this weapon is approximately 12 meters that is my estimation given the damage drop off given the hip spread given how many pellets etc etc you should be able to get one shot kills all the way up to 12 meters however your ideal one shot kill range is going to be a little bit closer than that the blunderbuss also has another major downside. The hipfire spread is very, very poor with twice that of the TAC-19 or the other shotguns. This It has a very, very wide overall hipfire spread. I guess it's supposed to be like an ancient, you know, cannon, a pirate sort of blunderbuss weapon. They even, the, most of the names for these are pirate themed. So the overall spread is very, very wide. In some circumstances, this can be a good thing because if you're close range with somebody and you're off by a little bit, it still has the damage 
and spread to kill them pretty easily, even if you quite you know, miss by a wide shot. However, if enemies get just a little bit further away, this very much so works against you. It can be very annoying to be perfectly on target, but have the spread of your pellets be so wide that not enough of the 20 hit to kill people. You Sometimes you're only having like two or three pellets hit, and that's maybe not enough to kill, which can be very, very, very frustrating. That's why I highly recommend aiming down sights with this one to get the tightest possible spread. It's still not going to be a great spread, but that's kind of all we got to work with. I would also like to note that headshots do not deal any extra damage on the blunderbuss whatsoever. So going for headshots is totally worthless on this weapon. It might feel fun, it might feel satisfying, but I would tell you not to do it overall. Another fun fact, the wall penetration is low. Most of the shotguns have this exact same penetration factor, and don't be surprised if you can't wall bang people. The aim down sights time, sprint out time, raised drop times, and mobility times are identical to other shotguns. They are, I would say, right about in line with the submachine guns. You can aim down sights in about a quarter of a second, sprint in and out time is about 0.15 seconds, and raise and drop times are about half to one second, kind of depending. Nothing really special or unique about it in this regard. Some of the variants do interesting things with these timers, which we'll talk about that in a minute, but I just thought I would point it out, no matter how it feels, no matter how it handles, no matter how frustrating the reload is, aim down sight, sprint, mobility, raise, drop, all of that is exactly the same. As for what I think about this shotgun and how you should be using it, I, I think this is the best shotgun in the entire game for killing one person. The damage output is absurdly high. If you're within the right range, it's pretty much a guaranteed one-shot kill and there's nothing they can do about it. It really can't be outplayed in that respect. However, it's terrible for anything else. You are only going to kill one person with this weapon, and all the amount of time that I've tried, I've never gotten a double kill or a collateral with it, and the reload is so absurdly slow, it is completely impossible to chain kills, and I mean that the timer for chain kills actually expires before you can even reload this weapon. It's kind of like the M1 Irons in this regard, and that the M1 Irons was excellent for 1v1 duels, as well it should be because it was a cowboy pistol, but it was terrible for extended gunfights or anything like that, because it had a major ammo problem, and it's the same thing here. If you really want to make sure that one person dies, this is an awesome gun, but you should expect a lot of one-for-one -one trades with it because it takes five seconds to reload. As for how you should best use it, I think this works best as a backup weapon for search and destroy, or maybe for your sniper rifle, or as a just for fun weapon. So if you have fast hands-on, you can put away your sniper rifle or whatever your primary is in S and D, or if you're just sniping in general, and if somebody rushes you, you can break this bad girl out, and you're just about guaranteed to kill them if they're close. If they're going to SMG rush you, if they're going to come in with the speakeasy or the M1 irons or the bowel or something, you can dump truck them with this weapon. However, if two people rush you, it's completely worthless. If you want to use it like a regular shotgun, completely worthless. However, this is a pretty beastly backup weapon. I would recommend fast hands with it, though, because the draw might be a little bit on the slow side. And it's also a very good just-for-fun weapon. If you guys are like me, if you like challenges, if you like playing just for fun, if you kind of, maybe not trolling, but cheesing a little bit, showing people that you don't have to use the bow or the ASM-1 and still kill people, it's really great for that. This is a hilarious just-for-fun weapon, and I have a really good time, you know, playing with it that way, but it's not a practical go-to all the time, everyday MLG kind of weapon. The best attachments for this weapon are advanced rifling and quick draw. Advanced rifling is definitely the best. That extends your one-shot kill range significantly and your overall range significantly going to be a go-to attachment for sure. Quick draw is very nice because when you aim down sights with this shotgun, like all the shotguns in Advanced Warfare, you get the tightest possible pellet spread. Your aim down sights pellet spread is the exact same as your standing still pellet spread, so you want to be able to do that very quickly and keep it as tight as possible. This gun has a really kind of widespread, kind of annoying, so you want to run these two, but definitely advanced rifling, if anything. You can also put a stock on it. It's also it's only got three attachments. I personally didn't find to be the, the, find the stock to be very useful because I just kind of aim down sights and spray and run away to reload, but if you want to use it, you can. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. All right, guys, it is time to talk about the variants for this weapon. I have several of the variants, and I'm going to talk to you about the ones that I like or the ones that I was able to perform very well with. The best variant overall, I'm going to say, is the Dragonfire. The Dragonfire has two extra pellets, which increases your damage approximately, you know, 11, 12, 15 percent, something like that, and no other penalties with the exception of the fact that the sprint out time is a little bit 
slower. That can kind of be annoying, but with this weapon you're setting up your shots, I hesitate a little bit anyway, and it's almost a purely bonus variant. It's very, very fun, very easy to use. The hand cannon is another good variant. One of the interesting things about it, even though you do have less pellets and less damage on this one, which can be frustrating, your hip fire spread is significantly tighter. The hand cannon has much, much tighter hip fire spread, and I feel that more than makes up for the difference in loss of pellets. The musketeer is quite another good one as well. You've seen that in this gameplay. It was the pinkish one. It has just a flat bonus on the maximum damage range. You get an extra 15% maximum damage range, just kind of like the uh, magnitude or some of those other kind of guns. You stack that with advanced rifling. Very, very good. Very, very effective. No other downsides. Pure bonus weapon. Very good. And the culverin is also pretty interesting. It's a professional variant. The sprint out time is a little bit higher, but you do get an increase in pellets and your maximum width, like your sprinting uh, hip fire is better. Not your standing still, but your sprinting hip fire is better. So if you want to run that with gung ho, or, or, you know, if you just like sprinting and spraying, that can work very, very well for you. These are the ones I would recommend. These are the ones I would go for. Personally, I like the Dragonfire. You also saw me use the Thunderpipe in this particular episode. That was the yellow one. The Thunderpipe really isn't a good variant from anything I can tell, but I did really good with it for reasons completely unknown. Overall, I don't think you're going to see a whole ton of variation within these weapons because the core limiting factor is just completely on how much you can set up your kills and how sneaky you are about reloading. That's going to determine whether you're successful or not with this weapon. Guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the single SAC-3 and MP11 buffs. The next episode is going to be on the SVO sniper rifle, which should be coming later today, and then we'll move on to the STG. Drifter out.